Hey, uh, today it looks like it's going to start raining here in Baguio for several days. Uh, probably fairly heavy rain coming, but uh, today's a nice day, so I kind of wanted to get out. I thought this would be a kind of a fun opportunity to show you some of the local uh, wood carvings, furniture, uh, and we can look at some of the some of the local species of wood as well. We'll also look at some of the exotic species that are used here too. Uh, so I'll go around Baguio, I'll show you a few spots where they sell it and some of the things that are sold here. So I took a taxi to the first stop. Uh, soon I'll get into some shops with some furniture made of native wood, but because it was the first place I came to, I just thought I'd get out right there uh, and then just walk the rest of the way down. Uh, we'll quickly look at some of the non-native uh, mahogany here. And mahogany is among, if not the most commonly planted tree here for lumber purposes. And I wanted to show it to you so you could compare it to some of the native species. Uh, for me, hands down, the native species are much more, have much more character and are nicer, but uh, mahogany is obviously also highly valued and it's used all the time here. I even noticed that uh, they built a little jeepney waiting shed near our, near our place and I noticed they use mahogany for it. Uh, when I asked prices, uh, you could get a solid mahogany queen size bed for about 18,000 pesos. So that's about 320 US dollars. That's just asking quickly the price, uh, no negotiation or shopping around, but I'll, I'll just put it out there for you. Uh, most of the prices that you're gonna see on things today probably could be negotiated down at least a little bit. And we'll go now some of the wood carving village here. We'll see some of the furniture that's for sale. This is on the way down to uh, Ben Cab Museum, which is very, it's a nice museum. A lot of uh, nice local artwork. Has a room with paintings from national artists. Definitely worth a visit if you come to Baguio. Definitely worth a visit if you come to Baguio to go to Ben Gavin's. A Sin Road. Uh, when I first came to Baguio, a lot of this was just pretty rough road still, but since then it's been paved. Uh, it's, I'm walking today because there's not a lot of parking here and I just kind of want to stop wherever I feel like it. A sin road is always to drive. We drive down it going to our farm pretty much every time uh, while they're working on the circumfer circumferential road that's coming from the Gillian. But uh, it's always, it's not that bad, but it's kind of like something between a highway and a block party every time you drive down a sin road. So you gotta kind of keep your, your wits about you. You can see there's no sidewalk here. So sort of have to trust that the cars are gonna see you and it's all right. So there's a river that this road follows. If you look back in the back there, you can see the ocean. So Baguio is kind of interesting because from several, several areas in Baguio, you can actually see the ocean still. You know, Baguio's close to a mile high, so we're, we're approaching the height of Denver, but you can see the ocean. Uh, right now I'm quite a bit lower than most of Baguio, but there are some places you can see the ocean from. Across the river is a subdivision, but all along this road are wood carvers. Uh, so you see a lot of souvenirs, but there's also quite a bit of just heavy local style furniture we'll show you. So now we'll move on to some of the native woods. Uh, the first one I came across was Nara. Nara can vary quite a bit. I put up a video showing several uh, different variations of that before. Uh, 
you'll see other furniture made of it, but this one has uh, some really amazing grain. Next, we have a solid Camagone table. This is also known as Philippine ebony. Uh, Camagone comes from several species in the genus Diospyros. Uh, it's the persimmon uh, genus. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the specific species of the different Camagone you'll see here. The wood can vary uh, quite a bit depending on the age. I've even heard that since these are dioecious trees that the wood that comes from a male versus a female tree can affect the wood. Uh, I'm, I honestly haven't seen a lot of uh, evidence to show how you can tell which is which species uh, or if it's male or female or any of that, but uh, even though this wood varies and it's different species under the uh, name Camagone, they're all part of the same genus and uh, it's pretty easy to recognize once you've seen several examples, but it can vary from being jet black to highly grained to lighter colored. Uh, the table and chair set was about 160,000 pesos, so it's not cheap. The prices of this furniture have gone up so much in the last 10 years. Uh, I felt like, you know, how your grandparents would tell you when you're a kid how cheap stuff used to be, and I felt like the opposite of that when I was going around today. Everything just seems so much more expensive, so uh, I don't know if it's just inflation or also just that these are becoming more and more rare, but the prices have really shot up. Here's a malave table. Malave is a dense wood. It's very resistant to insects. You can see this one has some filling in it. Uh, often filling in the furniture here won't be so obvious, so you really need to look at the piece that you're wanting to buy so that you know what you're getting. Um, preferably take it out in the sun or at least have a flashlight. A lot of the furniture shops here are very dark, so uh, it can be easy to to miss something in the lighting that's inside the furniture shop. This is a Camagone rocking chair. It was actually pretty comfortable. Uh, it was 16,000 pesos. Uh, very pretty. Here's another Molave table. This one uh, it's one of the nicer ones that I've seen. It's all solid wood. You want to really get down and look under the furniture before you buy it. Make sure that if you, if you think it's solid, it's actually the same thickness all the way underneath. There's not huge uh, defects that you uh, get home and are surprised to find or that it's maybe a lot thinner toward the center. This one has pins made of camagone, and those are so often the furniture here is is so dense that these tables are extremely heavy, and uh, so a lot of it's made so that you can uh, disassemble it to transport you said it. Sixty five. Yeah, is that with the chairs? The chairs and six chairs. Six chairs, and this is sixty five. Yeah. Okay. And the chairs have. Camagone bags, six chairs. What is this about maybe four feet by five feet, something like that? That's pretty. So it started raining heavily enough that I decided to go back to the city center. I locked, looked out and got a jeep right away.
I took a Jeep a minute ago from the wood carving village in Asin, and it happened to stop just across from the city hall. I thought I'd take this as an opportunity to kind of take you around this little park here. Let me show you it. This is one of the nicest little parks in Baguio. No one comes to it. As you can see, I'm all alone. Here's what I was wanting to show you. Very, let's see if I can get better light. Nice. Bagras or rainbow eucalyptus. Get the umbrella out of the way. Bagras or rainbow eucalyptus trees. Fortunately, these get kind of nicked up by people, but that'll peel off again eventually. So, the rainy season's just started and it's all fresh green. Very nice. I think the person working here told me these were about seven years old. Already very nice trees. I guess they'd be about eight years old now. It's a nice little park though. Right in the center of the city. Yeah, right by Cafe by the Ruins. Just up the street from the market a little bit. It's worth a visit. Alright, so it's starting to rain again, so I'm gonna head indoors. We'll go to the next stop, which is the parking area of Maharlika. A lot of Maharlika is uh, things tourists can bring back home, native cloth, flowers, there's a big area where you can get have things sewn or mended or altered, uh, but that's not where we're going, we're going here, the parking lot, and the reason, because in the parking lot there are a lot of shops they sell wooden new and antique furniture so we'll take a look at those unfortunately during the pandemic a lot of these shops closed so most of these used to be antique furniture shops but a lot of them closed down so we'll take a look at them here what all is here Let's see what's open Let's look first here at this Malave. I'm not sure. It looks like it was finished and with some dark finish and then sanded off. It's a nice effect though. It looks good. 38,000. It's a label on that. Camagon pillars, about a little over a meter tall. This one's 10K. Really nice. Lave. One is 35. Very nice. That camera going bench. So this is a camphor dresser or cabinet and on top of it's a camphor chest. I was trying to research a little bit more to see exactly which species these are, but it looks like there's a couple of species that are listed as camphor. Um, there's one that's a species actually of cinnamon that's listed in an old book that I have uh, on Philippine hardwood trees, a compilation of notes on the most important timber tree species in the Philippine Islands. That's from the early 1900s, so it doesn't look like, from what I can tell, that species is native, or the other species that I could see of camphor are native. Uh, but if it is that cinnamon species, it's been around uh, for a long time if it's already uh, being harvested in the early 1900s, so it's not a recent introduction. This is camphor actually, so when you open this up, it smells great. Very nice. And 
not cheap. 390,000 pesos. This looks like it's Nara and I guess that's Camago. Camagone chairs here. Newly finished Camagone. What do you call this? I don't know what the term for it. Altar table, okay. Beautiful. Chess. This isn't the most intricate one I've seen. This is pretty nice though. Uh, they're pretty common. You'll see mother of pearl inlays in them. Or bone. This actually looks like it's a bone inlay. Rather than mother of pearl. Here's Oh, this is nice. Okay, this lets you see what's Camagone. What does it look like when it is not finished yet? So you can see that dark wood is just a natural color of the wood. And then if you just waxed it, it's going to look like this dresser over here. Especially if you give it a little time, it'll darken up. So turn on the light here. I think this is ooh, 125. This is an old dresser, but it's been refinished. You can see even the drawers solid. All of that's Camago. It's no joke. Inside Camago and all of that. So when you look at furniture here, you want to look at it's good to have a flashlight so you can find any filling, but this old stuff is really the best. So it's just nicest, the nicest wood. So this is a, underneath all of this is a solid Camagone table. This is unfinished. And usually what they'll do with these, you can see the really nice grain even just sanded but what they'll do is they'll have a uh, turn the light they will uh, just sand it very smooth maybe like a wet sanding even uh, and just maybe not on a table so much just because it'll get ruined they, they might put a some a little more protective coating on a table but a lot of times what they'll do is just put a wax on it and that's it looks like it maybe has malave legs Camagone, this is, this is the bench. These organic shapes are really popular. Uh, so the wood is expensive enough that they'll kind of just take what any piece they can and make what they can out of it. And it leads to some pretty, pretty cool furniture. The Malave bench back in the back. If you come to these places, you really gotta stop and look for a while. Because you'll always find something new. Okay. So this is Epil. The, the red part is Epil too? No, no, it's no more. It's uh, mahogany. Mahogany, okay, okay. That, that's, I was thinking it looked pretty different. So the dark part is Epil. Yeah, Epil. And the, red, the reddish part's mahogany. Uh, mahogany. Okay, I didn't but know that. We, we treated them, so no problem for the there might still... Mm. Wow, that's nice. Yes, we mm. might... Actually, those panels, I got that from uh, Cavite in Manila. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because that's they cool. did something uh, different from the lowlands in the Ilocos region. Yeah, that's... Mm. Yeah, that's... Uh, but it's pretty nice. Mm. So Epo gets that dark, huh? Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. I didn't know that. 
But the newly cut epil, it's not like that. It's it, it will look like uh, like this when it's like freshly the, exposed. Yeah, yeah. And then as it gets older, it gets, it gets like darker, this. Yeah. So it's an old house post. Mm. Is that is that bone inlay? Which one? Yeah, this one. Bone. Yeah, oh. bone inlay. And the frame, the black one, that's kamagong. That's why it's mixed. It's a uh, nara, mor, uh, nara, kamagong, and EP. I have not seen that combination before. That's cool. Mm. Nice. So which one? Is, the nara is the drawer. Yeah. The okay. Drawer so this is nara. Center. And okay. Yeah. So this is nara. nara yeah. This is Epo. Okay. On the dark uh, brown, it's EP. So. get aged epo and so so if you wanted to get dark you need to just wax it don't put yeah, a just, varnish yeah, on yeah. it or anything mm -hmm. just wax okay ah, cool even the uh, I, 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 there's also a how is it uh, not the name of the wood again it's uh, narik they call it narik in the locos narik they call it narik it's, oh. uh, yeah, it's like mulawe, but once it's been exposed, maybe maybe in a month or maybe five months, something like that, it will get darker and darker. Really dark. ah. yeah. That's why if you put puppy, uh, uh, if you put puppy, uh, the same color as the uh, uh, the shade of the wood. Uh, when in five in five months, you can see the, the putty. Looks, the putty you uh, can see the putty. It's, that's N A R I G, Narik? Narik. Narik, but, but no, no, I, I don't know. I don't. Are uh, we have... Because those one, uh, those are the old post. Uh, but I, I have not seen uh, Narik uh, tree. We have, we planted trees, Narik, but it's N A R I G. I don't know if it's the same tree ah, or not. It is. I bet it is, yeah. Because yeah. we planted Narik. a lot of hardwood trees, so. I mm. bet it's the same one. Yeah, that's a hand, it's a hard a hard wood. It's yeah. like a mulabe. The the stress of the wood is the same. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, mulabe. Uh, that one, uh, nari, uh, yakal. Mm. Yeah, we planted some yakal mm, also. Yakal. Mm. My dad loves to plant uh, when he says he's strong. And yeah. Stay young. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. But now that uh, they are uh, expanding the highway they have they have to cut the trees cutting the trees yeah. all right so uh that was maharlika now we'll actually wonder what i wanted to do is uh while i was in the area i thought i stopped by and show you a couple of other things there uh foggy was known for its vegetables Probably one of the better places to get those in Baguio is actually to go to the hangar market just off of the just off of the main market. Just kind of get vegetables in there in bulk, so they tend to be reasonably priced and fairly fresh. Excuse me. Uh, very close to that is Garcia's Coffee, and it's one of my favorite places to buy coffee. The Price it went up a little bit since the last time I got some coffee, but uh, it's about you can get a couple, get a kilo, a couple pounds of coffee for uh, I think the bag and everything is eleven dollars something, so six hundred pesos, and then paid a little extra for the foil bag because it's raining off and on, and I didn't want it to get wet. But now I am on my way to uh, the next stop. This is uh, going to be on South Drive. 
It's one of my favorite shops to go to. We'll we'll check out check it out, see what all they have there. All right. While I'm walking here, uh, I also wanted to talk about. Okay, what does this have to do? Besides the obvious that these things come from native trees, what's this have to do with our farm? Uh, when I first came to Baguio, I went out around to these shops. And by the way, the the prices were so much cheaper. This was about 10 years ago. It's pretty crazy how much they've gone up. But I go around to the different shops. It's kind of a fun way to go around the city and. Uh, get to see different places but I kind of fell in love with the native hardwood furniture and as I was learning about it I realized a lot of those species are endangered or threatened and basically it's some of the last furniture that you are going to see made of those at least until people plant more trees and those are grown up so that they can be harvested. Uh, but that's partly what inspired us to start our farm. Uh, anyway, my battery's getting low, so I'm gonna stop, stop talking and go to the next spot here. So I'll be, see you in a minute. All right, the next stop is just off of South Drive. Uh, this place has just some of the most impressive furniture carvings that I've come across. You saw Malave table, Camagone eggs. I think those are used for massage. I understood that right. Back in the back there, you can see a a shelf that's made of epil. So earlier you saw some darker epil. This is more freshly cut. So a lot of these species will oxidize over time, so they get they get darker over time. Uh, even mahogany, when it's freshly cut, doesn't have that orange color. Uh, when I saw that, some freshly cut it was a lot lighter, and then. Over time, a few weeks it turned orange. A nice camagone chair, solid camagone. I've probably been pronouncing camagone wrong this entire video. Every time I say it to somebody, they don't know what I'm talking about, and then about 15 seconds into the conversation, they say, Oh, camagone, and I, I have no idea how they're saying it different than I am, but apparently they are. down in the basement here this I'm not sure what that's made out of and need the uh, person there didn't know either it's kind of very nice little coffee table this place does a lot of nice uh, inlays nice ties if there's a crack in the wood very artistic furniture here on top of that's a camagone bowl. Before we go, I wanted to also show you one other species, which is common in Baguio. Uh, the tree is common in Baguio. You don't see tons of furniture made out of it. It's not hard to find, though. This is 
technically not a hardwood species. This is a pine. This is Benguet pine. It's it's much harder than most of the pines that if you're from, let's say, the uh, United States or Canada, it's much harder than those. These particular boards came from uh, trees that were downed in typhoons. So this is old growth, really dense wood. This pine, I think, looks a lot nicer than the pine in the States. So we'll uh, go home here, make some of that Garcia's coffee. And I'll show you one last, uh, and I'll show you one last type of wood that I didn't see in town today. Alright, the last thing I wanted to show you, I didn't see any in any of the shops today that I recognized at least, is this. Oh, get in the sunlight for you. This is Mog Kono. He has a nice, nice green, golden, also some dark in there. Uh, Mog Kono's the densest wood in the Philippines and this chair, it's, a, it's, it's pretty rare anymore. This chair is actually from an old stump, I guess, and roots. So it's actually a lot of the furniture you'll see here that's kind of this like this uh, live edge, looks really rough, is actually stuff that was old and kind of dug up either from a stump or just old wood that they're recycling. So. Uh, if you're if you're purchasing wood, it's good to to see what where's the source of the wood, uh, to hopefully have an ethical source if uh, if you can confirm that. But so many beautiful species of wood here. Um, I really hope people plant lots of it now, so in 40, 50, 100 years, there's still plenty that can be enjoyed uh, a lot of the stuff when I talk to people uh, anymore in order to get the wood I, I was talking to one seller and he said that when, when the guys are looking for wood now they're they're almost not even looking for trees they're just looking for stumps so that they can see what they can dig up but uh, it's something that we can rectify I mean there's 40 50 years seems like a long time but in the grand scheme of things if you plant stuff now uh hopefully you or your kids grandkids will be able to enjoy the trees while they're alive eventually uh, utilize them uh, if they happen to be blown over in a storm or if you just plant it for that purpose so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you.